Welcome to Game Tape with Tony. As always, I'm your host, Tony Ferrari from the Hockey News. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Ottawa 67's forward, Luke Pinelli. How are you doing today, Luca? I'm doing great. How about you? Not too bad. Happy to have you on. It's going to be good to get to know you. But let's get to know where you started in hockey. Who got you into the game and what age were you? Um, well, I mean, I started at a really young age, around uh, maybe two or three. Um, you know, my dad my dad put me in. I, I had two older brothers growing up, so... Um, they were they they started at that age too, so I kind of got to uh, look up to them and and kind of follow their footsteps. Now the sixty sevens were a dominant team this year, finishing top of the league standings. Although the playoffs didn't go exactly as planned, what went into being such a dominant team this year for you guys? Um, I mean, I think just going into the year, we were kind of um, a team that people talked about that we're going to be kind of a mid pack team. Um, so I think I think we kind of we kind of came in there. I'm not listening to anything uh, and kind of, I guess, proved everyone wrong. And, and you know, we're a really hard working team. Um, you know, we're well connected. Uh, we listen to what our coach says and, and you know, he's obviously a really great coach. So um, I think it, it all worked out for us. Now you guys had that wild start. I, I forget how many games it was now, 17 or 18 games in a row you guys won. What kind of was your guys' mindset during that period? Did you think you were going to ever lose at that point? I mean, no, not really. Um, <laughs> well, we, we started off, yeah, we started off really well. I mean, right when we got to about, I think, the fourth game, um, we, we went into an out or shootout with Sue and went like 15 rounds. I think that was the fourth game, maybe. And after yeah. that game, I think, mean, like, we were all just, I mean, we just kept on going and felt like it was never going to end. But yeah, um, that kind of got us really rolling and got the confidence up for the year. Now, you were a big part of the team. You finished second in the team in scoring the regular season and led the team in the playoffs with 18 points in 11 games. What has it been like taking a leading role offensively as a player who's maybe not one of the oldest guys on the team? Yeah, I mean, I think, it, yeah, obviously, um, you know, I thought I had a pretty strong year. Um, you know, obviously, with with the team being uh, really good, it kind of that kind of helps uh, kind of me me being the player, player I was this year. Um, so, yeah, I think um, no matter kind of my age, um, I, I kind of took on that role and and uh responsibility um so now every kid needs to work on something in the off season what was it like that you worked on last off season to get better for this season and what do you plan on working on this off season um i mean last year i started getting into uh shooting a lot um i had kind of like a shooting coach uh so you know we get a goalie out and and do stuff work on different angles and, and stuff like that and i'd always kind of be working on that so i think even last year i was i was working on that um, this year I'm going to do the same. Uh, and last year I also kind of my skating, I was working on that. And this year I'm really focusing down, you know, on my skating, um, kind of, you know, elongating my stride or, and, and what's going on. So, yeah. Now everybody likes to try to pick out parts of different players, games, looking at the NHL. Is there a couple guys that you try to pick parts of their games of? of? Um, I would say, yeah, I, I would say maybe, uh, someone like Mitch Marner, um, or kind of like a little bit of, of Brad Marchand, maybe. Um, kind of in the ways where Mitch Marner, you know, he's he's skilled, has very high hockey IQ, can make plays um, anywhere on the ice. Uh, and and I guess uh, Brad Marchand in the way he kind of really competes, doesn't really care about his size, um, is, has that little bit of a, a bite to to his game. So, Now, is there a player you're looking forward to playing against if, if and when you do get to the NHL in a couple of years? Um, I mean, I think my favorite player growing up was Patrick Kane, so... I think it'd kind of be really cool to play against him and, and kind of see like him in real, per, real, uh, you know, and see him on the same ice as me. Uh, that'd be, that'd be really cool. All right. Now, before we get to some game tape, can you give everyone watching a little bit of a self scouting report on yourself? Um, yeah, I would say, um, you know, I'm, I'm an all around, you know, great player. I think um, I, I very high IQ. I'm very skilled. Um, I, I can find my teammates and, and set my teammates up in, in the ozone. And not only that, I can, use my use my shot as a as a threat to uh to other goalies so and, and I'm also a very competitive player and, and love the game all right now you mentioned you have a brother in the, the in, or a brother in the OHL sorry drafted into the NHL Francesco you had a moment where you guys got a face off against each other earlier this season what was it like going up against him not only in the face off but just on the ice in general yeah it was it was a really cool moment to kind of share with him um you know I was always looking forward to uh to get him to play him, uh, and and when it happened, it was it was really cool. It was a little bit weird, kind of seeing him on the ice, but uh, I had a fun time. Now, is there things that he's kind of taught you in the process? And I know he's obviously been drafted. He's gone through this a little bit. 
now that it's your draft year, does he kind of give you little tips and pointers or is he, are you kind of ignoring what older brother says? No, no, I definitely take tips and pointers. I mean, I, I take it whenever, I, you know, not a lot of people kind of have, have that. So um, I use it to my advantage. I mean, he, he's taught me a lot, um, just kind of creating good habits, anything on the ice, uh, teaching me little, little things. And yeah, so I think it's, it's a, it's a real help that, that I have him with me. All right, now let's get into some actual game tape here for you. This is from uh, one of your playoff games against uh, Oshawa here. You make a nice play to kind of get the puck back to your defender, get the puck up ice. You get going up there, you score right as you kind of take the shot. Defender takes you down into the boards. You get up in your chirp. And you talked about a little bit of that bite from Brad Marchand. What kind of goes into this moment for you and, and, and just kind of break down what's going through your mind and, and hopefully what, what the defender's thinking? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I got, I got the puck here and, and went down and, and tried to get a shot on that and, and it went in and yeah, at, at the moment I was really fired up. Uh, I mean that, that whole game, I mean, it's playoffs. So, um, I'm, I'm extra fired up during playoffs. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was really fired up there and, and I think he was kind of, I don't know, he was maybe chirping me during the game and, and trying to like hit me. So, uh, yeah. And I think he did something to one of my teammates. Yeah. Right there. He hit my teammate, so I was I was really rattled, not rattled about that, but had to get in his ear about it, especially because I just scored. Yeah, it's it's always good to be able to kind of get back at him on the score sheet, but once in a while you kind of do got to get in there and chirp away. Do you have a favorite chirp that either you said this year or or a teammate said or something you've heard on the ice? Um, I mean, I feel like when I do it, uh, it kind of just comes off the top of my head. Don't really remember it or, or kind of plan it out, but. Uh, I don't know. I can't really think of any right now, like that my teammates have or have received or anything. Um, uh, at least not any that are uh, PG thirteen, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next clip I got for you is a good defensive play by you. Uh, you, you like you mentioned, you're not the biggest guy out there, but you're able to kind of get under, uh, assert your leverage points, and you do so here on the end boards. You get the puck out, move the play up ice quickly, and then you get a good offensive chance. Your defensive game is something I've really noticed developed this year over last year. What has gone into that for you? Um, I mean, yeah, I think I think having you know Coach Dave, uh, you know, he's a really good coach. He he really uh kind of pushed me to 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 be better in, in in my defensive game. Um, you know, I've always been a pretty good defensive player, but um, I think yeah, I've really I've really focused on that. Um, and you know, I've always kind of looked at that to to you know improve on during the year and you know, having more responsibility in the defensive zone and stuff like that. Now, one of the things I really like about this play is as you kind of get up ice, the puck gets kind of kicked around, loose a little bit, and you do a really good job of controlling the puck here, kicking it to your stick after kind of bouncing around a bit, getting by a defender, and then setting yourself up for a great chance to get an assist here. What goes into your puck control game? Because that's something you you, have a, you do a really good job at despite being a smaller guy that maybe some people would kind of deem as a guy that could get bumped off the puck. You don't do it all that often. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, I, I've, I have a really good stick, so, um, I use that whenever and, and, you know, um, yeah, and, in tight little areas, I'm, I'm pretty quick. So I think, um, just like kicking that up to myself, you know, it's, it's something, you know, I kind of do regularly and, and yeah, it's, and then just going, going to the net, faking it out and, and I bring it around and saw my D coming down. So, um, that's something else we, we usually kind of work on D coming down. So I knew that was kind of coming and, um, passed it and he scored. Now, is there a guy in the 67s that you think is maybe a little bit underrated, a guy that doesn't get enough love? Um, yeah, I think I would say probably uh, Will Jarrois. I mean, he's he's a workhorse. You know, he, he gets in, in the dirty, uh, you know, not with, with his size. You know, um, he kind of goes in there, doesn't really care, kind of has the same mentality as I do, I guess. And, you know, yeah, he works really hard. So I, I'd say he's he's an underrated player. Now, this next clip I have for you here, you do a really good job of kind of just, get, again, getting into the dirty areas, working the puck off the wall, winning little battles, getting a, a pass off at the blue line, and then reloading and getting back in the offensive zone for yourself to get a chance or two. You're a guy that that creates a lot of offense, a guy that's kind of buzzing around the ice all the time. How do you keep that energy level up? Is it just kind of off-season cardio, working on making sure that you're staying in shape, or what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, I've always kind of had uh, really good cardio um, growing up. I mean, I played soccer. Um, I played midfield, so I was always kind of running, always moving around the field. So I think that's kind of helped with my my kind of conditioning. And, I mean, yeah, I think in the off season, I really kind of focus on that. Um, during the year, I try to keep that keep that uh, the pace up and, and, and work on my conditioning too. So, 
uh, yeah, I think uh, that kind of really helps when, when I'm in the offensive zone or, or wherever on the ice and, I, and I'm kind of on for a while and I kind of still have a little bit of energy in me. Now, one of the things I noticed in this shift and many others when I'm watching your game is you're constantly going high to low in the zone. You're changing positions, changing angles. What goes into that for you? Is that a coaching thing or is that just something you do to kind of create little advantages for yourself? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I would say, um, you know, uh, we, we kind of sometimes like to have, you know, a high of three or, or, you know, moving around the ozone have kind of layers. Um, but I think for me, I think, yeah, I find it pretty, pretty, uh, not easy, but, um, something that I can use to my advantage, uh, when I'm moving around, it kind of gets everyone kind of mixed up. And, and when I'm moving, it's, it's really hard to defend because yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I do. Now you mentioned playing soccer and keeping the tempo up in the off season. Do you think playing other sports, especially at a young age, it gives you an advantage as you develop as a hockey player? Uh, yeah, I think, I think a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think it does. Um, I think soccer's kind of helped me, like I said, with my, with my conditioning and stuff. And, and, you know, maybe it helped me with kind of my IQ uh, a little bit, uh, or it's just something that kind of came to me, but even in soccer, you know, I'd, I'd have really high IQ or not hockey IQ, soccer <laughs> IQ. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know if it translates or, or not, but uh, yeah, it's definitely helped. All right. This next clip I have for you here just kind of shows off your power play shot. You, you've got a really good shot. I think uh, you, you don't get the credit for it that you deserve. And, and this play shows, shows it off on the power play here. Just a good one-time shot where you, you kind of load up, but you're not really having the big stick up in the air up high. You're just able to kind of get a quick shot off locate it well and, and score a goal here you mentioned being in the shooting room a lot last off season is is this the kind of thing that you're working on yeah I mean even during the year um you know sometimes after practice working on extra shots you know I, I get some of my teammates to pass me pucks for one timers especially when I'm on on the flank uh for one timer so I'm always working on that but yeah I mean uh you know those low one timers kind of quick ones they they get off really quick I kind of drag my stick a little bit um, so I think those are those are pretty useful and it gets the puck off quick before the goalie can get to it. Now, is is there a shot? Every guy has a, a shot that kind of is their trademark or a shot that seems to be their favorite shot. Is, is it the one timer for you? Is it a snapshot? Is it a curl and drag? What's your favorite shot? Um, I mean, I use use the curl and drag a decent amount, um, but I think kind of uh, when I have it on on my backhand and do a quick forehand shot, like a, a really quick release one. I, I mean, I really like that one it kind of get catches goalie by surprise. I, I did it a couple of times this year and yeah, I think, I think that's one of one of probably one of my favorite shots to do because uh, it kind of stuns the goalie. All right. This next clip here, I have another one of your just goals from the year. Another good play here by you getting up ice, making a good play, cutting to the middle and just ripping it. You you have the, you mentioned the, the quick release. It, it fools goalies, especially when you're going East West, what goes into a play like this for you? You have a guy driving the slot, obviously, is this just you seeing an opportunity to shoot and taking it? Or is this you going, I, I'm going to shoot, hope, maybe there will be a rebound. If not, maybe I score. Um, Yeah, I think it's kind of one of those plays. I think, um, you know, I think when, when I'm entering the zone, um, I think catch, getting in that, in that, uh, in the middle of the ice, you know, my coach really talks about that a lot too. Um, getting, getting inside the dots uh, kind of, you know, I, I get a good chance of a shot. So I just use kind of the fender as a screen and uh, kind of put one on that hoping you know, I can create something off of it, whether, you know, I score or, or it creates a rebound for my teammate that's driving me and coming down on it. So that's kind of my, my thinking process there. Now I have to ask, I know he's plays a different position, but he's one of the most exciting players in the OHL. Pavel Minchikov was traded to your team partway through the year. What was it like kind of getting that kind of guy on the back end? Who's just an absolute animal offensively and has a pretty underrated defensive game as well. Yeah, I think I think it was huge for us. I mean, he was he was a really big pickup. Um, you know, all the guys were were pumped when he when he came to the team, and you know, obviously, yeah, he's a really he's a really good, great guy, and and obviously a great player. Um, so yeah, it, it really helped us a lot. I mean, I think I think when he came to our team, uh, it kind of showed that he's he can play defense too, and and he's strong in that in that area with our kind of gameplay. So uh, yeah. Now this next clip I have for you here, it's an interesting one because you don't end up with a goal and an assist out of it but it shows off your skating, the improved stride that you had this year and, and just the ability to kind of chase down pucks. The defender falls here. You take advantage. You get a great setup to the front of the net there. Ultimately you guys don't score, but it shows off that work ethic that you're talking about earlier, just the ability to kind of get in on the four check and, and make good things happen. Yeah. I think, um, you know, during the year um, I've had, I've had a kind of 
a decent amount of those where, where I pressure the D, um, kind of catch them by surprise. Uh, you know, with, yeah, with, with, like you said, my work ethic. Um, so, you know, I just, I just go in there and, and, you know, I create a lot of turnovers, um, with, with the D in, in our league by, uh, by pressing them. And it's something I kind of use, use to my advantage and, and then it create, create a chance off of it. Now you mentioned before we talked about you being a little bit of an undersized player, but you do a really good job of winning these little battles. What is it that you're doing specifically to win those little battles? Um, I mean, I, I think I just kind of go in, you know, against anyone, no matter if they're six, five, my height, um, I kind of just go in there and, and, and have the mentality that I'm going to win this battle and I don't really care who's, who's kind of up against me. So, um, yeah. Does it help that when you're in practice, you're going up against a guy like Jack Matier, who's a, a six, five defender and you have to work on uh, winning battles against a guy like him? Yeah, I think it definitely helps. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's also a competitive guy. So in practice, you know, he's always kind of, we're always kind of pushing each other and, you know, I'm pushing my other teammates. So uh, yeah, I think that, that definitely helps. All right. This final clip I have for you here is uh, an assist on an overtime winner. You get the puck up ice. You're, you're going. You kind of draw a lot of the attention, and then just make a nice little curl and curl pass behind your back right there. You guys score and win the game here. What's it like being on the ice for an OT winner for you, in, in making the play that kind of sets it up? Yeah, it's it's a great feeling. I mean, kind of, you know, it comes down to to whether you know that goal. Um, so I think it's it's always nice, kind of being a part of it or being on the ice. Um, it's it's a nice relief, I would say. Um, and it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely fun. Now your vision's really underrated. I think you, you make a lot of creative passes like this, where it's just a little hook behind the back pass, a little slip pass through, uh, through defenders feet or something like that. What goes into your passing and playmaking game? Um, I mean, I think kind of just, just my IQ. I mean, I kind of, I think I just see, see those plays. Um, and you know, I, I use my creativity out there and I'm not, not really afraid to, to not try something, um, you know, so I'm always kind of doing that. Now, a lot of coaches talk about making mistakes and having to make up for them and stuff. And then other coaches are kind of preach, hey, go out there if you're a skilled player, make the plays. And if you're going to make a mistake, it's okay. You're going to get the ice time. H have you been given the freedom to kind of do that in Ottawa? Um, I would, I would say yes and no. I mean, <laughs> I think, I think my coach usually says, um, you know, if you make, if you make a play, like say it's a risky play at the blue line, if you make the play, I won't say something, but if you turn it over, then, then you're going to hear it. So, um, I think there's a little bit of, uh, you know, my coach is pretty hard on me, uh, and, and my teammates about kind of turnovers. Um, so, you know, sometimes, I, I mean, I, I'll make the play if I, if I think I, I can make it, but you know, if I don't make it maybe I'll hear, it, but, um, I'll try my best to kind of get back with, with kind of my work ethic. All right, now I'm done with the video, so I've got a few more hockey questions before we get to some of the fun stuff. It's your NHL draft year, obviously. Uh, it's a, something that everyone talks about every year. How much are you paying attention to the coverage, the rankings, the lists that come out on TSN, Sportsnet, and all these other outlets? Um, I mean, I try not to pay too much attention to that stuff. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, it's it's kind of hard to dodge that stuff, um, especially kind of at a young age. Uh, you want to you wanna kind of see that stuff, and maybe you'll go looking for it. But, I mean, during the year, um, I kind of just tried focusing, um, on, on just my game and, and my team's game and, and helping them out and, and focusing on, on the end goal, uh, with, with the team. So I try not to pay too much attention, but I mean, now the season's over just training and, and, you know, uh, getting ready for, for it when it comes down. Now the NHL draft combine's coming up. You're gonna, you've talked to NHL scouts, I presume at this point already, and you'll be talking to many more before draft day comes. When they ask you, why should we draft you? What's your answer going to be? Um, I mean, I think, I think I'm going to say, you know, I got kind of, kind of the heart uh, of, of a lion, I, I guess you can say, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, sorry, I lost my train <laughs> of thought there. Um, but I mean, I think, I think I say, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I, I work hard. Um, I'm, I'm willing to, to do the things to make me a better player to, to reach my end goal, uh, which is the NHL one day. And, you know, I'm willing to put that work in and, and, you know, I work in silence. So, um, not many people know the extra things I do, but uh, I, I definitely do it. All right, now let's start to get away from hockey. And if you play any Olympic sport outside of hockey, summer, winter games, up to you. You don't need any tr prior training in the sport, but what Olympic sport would you play? Mm, I mean, I think Olympic sport, maybe. Hmm. 
maybe like a some like track maybe i don't know i i think growing up i played tr i did track a little bit with with my school and stuff and i was i was always pretty good at that stuff so that'd be kind of cool to to do that i mean it's pretty um well-known sport around the world so that's maybe one of them i don't know all right now uh if you could put yourself in any fictional universe something made up from a movie tv series star wars marvel whatever it may be which universe would you put yourself in and why um maybe somewhere yeah somewhere in the marvel kind of um universe i mean if you can kind of do any of those those kind of things like whatever it's like the hulk or, or iron man or, or superman kind of those stuff i think I'd be, i think it'd be really cool to kind of be a part of that stuff so i think that's that's something i put myself in uh do you have a hidden talent um hidden talent i mean nothing too crazy like there's stuff i can do like juggle i don't know juggle uh i'm like and well i can't backflip like just on the ground by myself <laughs> yet but you know in the pool i can do like game if you know what a gainer is like that yeah. kind of stuff but i don't know it's i guess i don't know it's not really a talent but a, a little bit it is but uh what music are you listening to right now uh i'm 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 a pretty big rap guy and, and country guy so i think those are probably my main my two main ones and yeah uh do you have a go-to karaoke song uh i mean i'm not the best when it comes to naming songs i like i know a lot of songs but i have to go to like my playlist maybe and and pick out a song that that, that would be one of my favorite ones but um yeah i don't know uh you have a, do you have a movie or a show recommendation for people to watch um maybe a show hmm let me think. I mean, I've watched. I think one one I liked was like the Last Dance with Michael Jordan. That was a yeah. cool film. So that's probably one that kind of stands out to me in my mind. I just watched the the McGregor documentary. I don't think yeah. I finished. It, but I still have a little bit left. I'm not sure though. But I don't know. Maybe maybe those two. All right, Luke. I really appreciate you doing this. It was a lot of fun getting to know you and uh, breaking down some tape. All right. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck at the draft, man. Thank you.